Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Agile Tester Sample Paper Discussions. We are in Chapter 3 talking about Agile Testing Methods, Techniques and Tools. And so far we have covered a few of the questions from this particular chapter and shall be looking forward to cover a few other remaining in the today's and a few other coming tutorials as well. Well, the next question for the day is question number 33 and here comes another scenario based question. So let's look at what exactly does this mean? So you have been asked to estimate the story points for a particular story using the Fibonacci sequence. You have reviewed the story, but it seems to indicate a significant amount of work and a number of unknowns, particularly around the creation of test data. That means we do estimate this as a lot of work. At the same time, there are a few unknowns, which means you're not sure about how long it's going to take time with. And uh, some of the information are missing that uh, how do you create the test data. So that's where we refer it to as unknown. So at this point, you don't know if you will be able to use existing data or will have to create your own. That's another unclear expectation being defined here that while estimating a story, you don't have clarity on the information provided to you, which could be a little tricky thing to handle because until unless you have all the information, you will not be able to judge what would be the exact or as close as possible to the required amount of work to be done. You also don't know how you will test the interface between the story and the existing code. Now that's another weird thing which is coming up in the scenario. That is, you don't even know how you will test the interface between the story and the existing code. That means the API information or interface or integration information is also mis missing as a part of the user story. Now given this information, what would be the proper value to assign in story point? Now, that's pretty much a critical thing to deal with because it's not something which is quite easy to determine that what exactly should be the story point here. Given that you have exact understanding and complete information, one can certainly go and estimate it. But when it comes to the you know number of uh, <clears throat> story points, it, it, it certainly should represent the amount of work well known for doing. But as you see, there are a lot of unclear information and I will not be able to uh, define that what exactly it will be. So I would rather prefer saying that as there are few unknowns and uh, I may certainly consume a bit more time to deal with those things. And uh, of course, as and when I have the information, I'll look forward to get the clarity first of all and then look forward to estimate it. Say for example, uh, someone is going to give you an approval that you have to create the data, then you would have to create the data. So I will not take the risk by estimating on the other side that someone will provide me data. Because if what if they don't provide? Because it's not clear at this point of time, right? So we always take on the higher side of it, right? Uh, we don't take on the lower side because if in case it doesn't happen that way, then it would be a challenge. And similarly, you don't know the interfaces, so you will still have to uh, figure out the ways how you can really get those information and uh, uh, look forward to see how integrations measures measurement can happen. So if I consider all this discussion, what we just had in, in just few moments, we would always keep it on the higher side because one point is very, very small. Indeed, a work of almost like one, one and a half days can be referred to as one point. Five could be a moderate, but as you know that we have to create the data, we have to talk about interfaces. So it's not something which can be done in two and a half or three days of time. So that's where the five pointer comes. So again, uh, people may have few questions on well, how did you basically judge that one point is equal to one day work? Answer is there is no such definition at all. I'm just taking a random example from any of the experienced organization where they do take one point is equal to eight hours. Some organization prefer taking as one point is equal to four hours. That's one of the problem with the scrum itself that they don't, they don't have a definition to one point, right? They just let organization define that you can go ahead and pick it up what one point basically means for you. So in that context, one and five are not recommended. So of course I'll choose the highest number representing this story, which is uh, 13. 
Why not 18? Because 18 does not fall under the Fibonacci series because in the very first line they told you the story points you are using is in the Fibonacci series or Fibonacci, Fibonacci sequence and Fibonacci sequence is basically a 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13 and then comes 21. So 21 is the next number not 18 so 18 is not in the series. So the highest number which we have in the given option is 13 and put together the right answer also is C, 13 is the respective estimate what we should allocate to this story at this point of time given that we have certain limited information and a bit of work to be done as well which cannot be done in 1 and 5 points. Well, taking up the next question here and the next question is uh, 34. You are testing a story for a mobile banking application and you have noticed that the response time seems slow. You have checked the acceptance criteria for the story and nothing is mentioned regarding performance requirements. What should you do now? I think it's a very clear and straightforward scenario which one should be very clear with at any point of time. Number one, that you have understood the response time is pretty slow, which anybody can observe while testing a system. But as you check the acceptance criteria for the story, you did not find anything specific to that of the performance requirement that what should be the response time, etc. So I think I can have multiple ways of handling this situation to be frank in reality based on your experience, based on your way of working and how exactly you have worked in past in these kind of situations. For that, the only way to tackle this question and get to the right answer is following the options. We don't want you to think of anything what probably you would have done in past and contradict with the scenario. This question is mainly to get aligned to the set of options provided in that pick up the best option. Okay, because your opinions would be right. Nobody is here to disagree with that. But at the given options, is one you have to pick so we don't really have to say that why not that why not this we are not here to evaluate the question we are here to evaluate the options and pick to the right answer so let's see option a says write a defect report and leave it to the developers to figure out how to make it faster now again given that as you discussed in the previous tutorial that given that you don't have an expectation defined it cannot be called or declared as a defect Defect is always expected is equal to actual. If it is not, then you call it as a defect. So if expectation does not exist, you cannot compare that with actual and do not, do not call anything as a defect. So A is ruled out. B, stop testing and require that the business owners define specific performance testing requirement in acceptance criteria. Now that's a, a very, very kind of like contradicting statement in one way because I cannot force business to come up with performance requirement. It may be possible that they are not interested in performance at this point of time. So it's not necessary to define a requirement related to it. So I cannot enforce this statement saying that it is always mandatory to write performance requirements. Performance is a non-functional level and it's not mandatory enough to be performed for any random application. So it's up to the business if they really want something we can always consult with them that, hey, did you miss anything? And we observe that the performance is slow. Is that okay with you? Now, given that the scope of work talks about performance to be better, then we will look forward to ask the business to define it. But given that the scenario has not mentioned anything about whether the scope of work includes performance testing or not, I cannot enforce or kind of like stop testing at front and ask business to define it, right? So. That's how you should basically judge an option and think about it. You don't stop testing just because something which is not specified is not working. C, continue testing with the assumption that the product owner will identify the problem if then indeed, if it is indeed a problem when they do user acceptance. So I think, yeah, I think that could be more of like a generic and very diplomatic statement that you please continue with testing. You don't really have to stop, but just keeping them uh, keeping these things as a surprise for the business is not recommended at, at all. You can always give them an information that we observe something like this, but the business can define their priorities that, okay, at this point, I think we are fine. We don't want anything. So informing them should be a good practice, not just letting them know about surprises at the end of the product and end of the project. So I would not say the first part is correct, but I would not say the second part is correct. You don't let uh, the business surprise 
with the features or not implemented features at the end of the uh, project which is user acceptance testing so you can always keep them informed and let them take the required action so looks a little good but um, cross check with D as well uh, review similar products existing documentation on acceptable performance and talk with business user to determine the performance requirement I think this is what I've been explaining you then right since so option a what I was trying to say that we always let or inform the business about these observations let the business take a call on this if they really want it because it's not necessary at this point they are interested or they really forgot something to be mentioned so in that context the put together the right answer here would be D review similar products existing documentation on acceptable performance and talk with the business user to determine the performance requirements now that would be their call completely to decide whether they want to go with it or if they forgot to mention it or they don't want to go with it so whatever it will be it will be their call out right so i think this is what best is supposed to be done from our side at that point of time so that's all from this particular tutorial team should you have anything else feel free to comment below i'm always there to address your queries and answer them well till then keep learning keep exploring keep understanding the context thanks for watching the video team and happy learning